Let's try something new this time. Don't subscribe. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't backfire. For an entire week, I wore this. The pineapple light has never been more appropriate. Now I know guys, I know, I know some of you are quite pissy right now, quite, quite ticked off because I wore a clone for an entire week. Parfums Vintage. It's a clone house. They make fragrances specifically designed to smell like other fragrances. And the company was essentially created to replicate Aventus. If you think back to Pineapple Vintage and Pineapple Vintage Noir, the whole idea behind those fragrances was one was fruity, one was a little bit more dark slash smoky perhaps to represent the different batches of Aventus. This is pretty much a perfect fragrance except for the fact that it's really expensive and really inconsistent. What Parfum Vintage was trying to do was bring some consistency back to our lives. The batch variations of these guys are right in the names. You have Pineapple Vintage Intense, you have Noir, you have Beyond Noir, and then you have King and Emperor, which is supposed to be really close, right? And I know they just announced Emperor Napoleon or whatever. I just, I can't keep up with these guys. And of course, right off the bat, Kind of, this was free. Free fragrance for little old me. But I don't really care about free stuff. I mean, I do appreciate it, PV. I mean, really I do. But if I don't like a fragrance, I don't like a fragrance. I wanted to know if this was the one. Is this the fragrance that replaces Creed Aventus? Kind of. But let's get into some details. Smell wise, these two, very similar. Why the fuck you lying? But it all depends on which batch of this you're talking about because my bottle of Aventus is a bit more fruity and musky because apparently 15X21 is a really fruity musky version. Bit of a batch rant. I don't really buy Aventus batch hype. Crucify me if you want, but I'm tired of answering questions on which batch is best. Because unless you're an addict to this one specific fragrance, how could you have possibly smelt every single batch out there? Even within those batches, how do you know one 15X21 is the same as another 15X21? There could be differences. But if you do buy into the whole batch variation thing, what I'm trying to say is, yes, there are inconsistencies within Aventus, but I don't necessarily know if it's a batch thing or maybe it's just an age thing. Maybe if the fragrance ages a bit, it becomes a bit darker and less vibrant. Or maybe if it's not stored correctly, that could also alter the fragrance as well. Ingredients does play a little role as well too because of regulations and all that. But long story short, when I compared the smell of these two, the opening was the only thing that was really different to me. I found Aventus to be a little more fruity while Emperor has a little more smokiness to it. It doesn't come across as a woody smokiness. It's a little more culinary. It's a little more like something you'd cook. It does seem to work, but it's just a slightly different smokiness. But that being said, after 10, 15 minutes, the fragrances become very, very similar. And what I really liked about Emperor this week was while I was wearing it, it didn't feel like a Parfums Vintage fragrance. And I don't mean that disparagingly because I'm a huge fan of Parfums Vintage Noir, but it never really felt like Aventus, right? It kind of felt like its own thing, which I liked. But Emperor in the air around me smells remarkably close to Aventus. Your scent cloud, your sillage, it will be Aventus. People thought I was wearing Aventus when I had X batch on, which is Aventus, but it's also Dior Sauvage. So this is clearly closer to Aventus than X batch will ever be. The presentation I briefly want to talk about as well. So with these new Parfums Vintage bottles, you have this nice embossed sort of sticker and there's a black top. But the most important change is the sprayer. We all know Creed sprayers are pretty awesome. But Parfums Vintage sprayers always seem to have pretty good distribution. I find the mist to be a lot finer, so it can evaporate into the air a little bit easier if you're too far away, but it's a really nice wide cone and it gets a lot of the fragrance on you. However, there was a slight leakage issue. The bottles were taking a leak. I find if you sprayed a few times, it would start dripping like here. And it doesn't really happen as much with this one. What I also like too is 
The sprayer is much more powerful. It's a much more focused burst of fragrance as well. And a good sprayer is a pretty big part of a fragrance's performance. The sillage on this is pretty extensive. When I wore this and I walked around the house, 10 minutes later, after I was in a room, I could be smelt. I tested this. Projection was very noticeable on myself for several hours as well. Four hours I was doing the Jay Copeland sniff test and I could smell myself pretty regularly. Even yesterday, I sort of broke my rule about only wearing one fragrance during the week because I wore Aventus on my left hand and Emperor on my right. They both lasted well over 10 hours. Although I will say at the 12 hour mark, Aventus was a little more prominent. It had a little more specificity to its smell. You can tell that it's Aventus. Well, Emperor did become a little bit more faint and harder to distinguish. But for 12 hours of wearage, I feel that's really solid. Now, did I get any unsolicited compliments this week? Duh, I got three, three unsolicited compliments. But here's the catch, um, they were all dudes. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> now, if you're an avid Aventus wearer, you may notice that although girls like Aventus, guys like it a little bit more, I feel. <laughs> and that kind of happened to me this week. Three unsolicited compliments by guys. One was my dad. <laughs> He's like, man, it's such a great smell. <laughs> Which he also pointed out earlier when he was in the office after I was in the office. And he's like, that was a really nice cologne you had on, dude. He didn't say dude, he doesn't say dude. And then when I went to the paint store to pick up some paint, get some blue color bucks up in here, the guy at the counter was like, dude, what do you got on, man? We were talking about the YouTube channel and then he's like, yeah, I was gonna say, man, what do you have on right now? But he was a good five feet away from me two hours after applying. So projection was still quite strong and quite noticeable after two hours. But the million dollar question is, would I recommend Emperor to you? Actually, the million dollar question is, why would you spend a million dollars on Creed Aventus? Because the price keeps going up the inconsistencies keep happening. At least with this, you kind of know what you're getting. You kind of know if it's gonna be a little more smoky, a little more fruity. I'm a huge fan of Creed. I own a lot of them. Hate to brag, love to brag. Boy, if you don't get- And for the time, this was a groundbreaking, unique fragrance that we all love. But there comes a point when it just becomes a bit exploitive. The thing about Creed is they sort of have a monopoly with their Creed fans. They know that people are going to spend the money because they want the Creed. So they'll just hike up the price while kind of diluting the product. That's why I can't roll with Aventus. At this point, I would never consider buying another bottle of it. One, because I have a lot of other fragrances that I can wear. And two, there's just so many better alternatives with similar performance, but more consistency. While there are much cheaper alternatives out there and Club de Nuit Intense for Men and the plenty of Dua and Alexandria fragrances. If those are good enough for you, if they're close enough for you, then go for it. So it seems like this is the perfect fragrance, right guys? This is like the ultimate. Why would you ever get Aventus? Well, hold on. There's one glaring issue here. It's not scent, it's not performance, it's nothing like that. It's the price. It's almost getting to office for men territory where you start to wonder, hmm, Hmm, is it really worth the price? Objectively speaking, liquid for liquid, this is still way better value. But what you don't get is the authenticity of having the original, which is very important to some people. I'm okay with not going with the original. And it's a large part of the reason that most of my wardrobe is from Zara. Zara is famous for having very similar stylings to the Gucci's and the Versace's out there at a much more affordable cost. It's not necessarily counterfeit, but it's heavily, heavily influenced. I've been consistently impressed with the quality of these fragrances, and anyone who's given them extensive testings will attest to that. Apart from vintage, they make great juice. Glug, glug, glug. You may not agree with their ethics, you may not agree with their pricing, and you may not be a fan of their customer service at times, which I don't really have to deal with because I'm hashtag blessed to be in my position as a YouTuber. But if you are interested in Parfums Vintage Fragrances, I would sample them all. I would sample them extensively. And if you're having issues with their website and there's back orders and things like that, there are some reputable sellers on Facebook, 
that I would encourage you to check out. Shout outs to Mark Mobley. Doesn't know I'm shouting him out, but kind of want to put his name out there for you guys. The era of the clone is upon us, guys. Take it or leave it. You may not be happy about it, but it just seems to be the trend nowadays. And within that realm, Parfums Vintage has consistently been my favorite of the bunch. But why'd you go and have to announce Napoleon Emperor, Emperor Napoleon? Is it gonna come in like a two centimeter tall bottle? Is it an Aventus clone for people that are really insecure about their height? This video is probably irrelevant because Emperor is old news, Emperor Napoleon, see how good you are. But that's just my opinion. Get your own.